Hey guys, it's Core Ross and Welcome to Six News. Today we are looking at the classified connectivity blog post. This is all about the servers and it's a very interesting read. So we'll start with the unplanned major downtimes. They've got a graph here of them all. Now they don't have December, even though they say a year in review up here. They, they stop at October, of course, and they start in January. So they're missing December, which was way worse. Like, I don't know where the December graph would be, but it'd be like probably up here somewhere. So first of all, I actually thought this looked maybe a little bit low. So I went and I actually checked. So in January, they say that they had almost 16 hours of downtime. So I went online and I went to Ubisoft support on Twitter, went back to January and I checked their tweets. So the first tweet of January with the first downtime for Rainbow Six Siege was a total of six hours. So the game was down on a single day for six hours. And there was a total of 11 tweets in January reporting downtime in Rainbow Six Siege and also reporting when the servers came back up. And I managed to calculate it all together. So even with that six hours in that one day, it did come to almost 16 hours. Now, I also know from personal experience, when the servers go down, it usually takes about half an hour for Ubisoft support to actually tweet about it. So I think this is a little bit lower than it should be, but I do understand where they're coming from. They're probably using their data, which is going to be quite in line with those tweets because they're like, oh yeah, servers are down. That may take them half an hour to kind of figure out but they're like, all right, yeah, and then they post when it's back up. So they do seem to be quite decent here with this number, but I would add at least a few extra hours on top of it. And you can see that August was actually worse. And like I say, December was definitely way, way worse. Now they go over why they were down for these different times. And the one that I was really surprised about was in January, it was actually apparently down to crossplay. They actually talk about crossplay down here. And apparently as well, December when crossplay launched, that is what caused them the most issues. The only thing is for a layman like myself, I don't understand how that could be an issue because crossplay doesn't increase the amount of actual games played on servers. It, you know, still the same player base. It's not like they're increasing exponentially their uh, usage of the data or the power or what. It should just be a bunch of the same games all coming together to play the game. So kind of weird that crossplay ended up being an issue, but apparently it was, and that was the major issue for December and then into January. However, they did seem to figure this out. And then of course, February, much better. March, beautiful. Then April, not so good. May, June, July, pretty good. And then August, terrible. So yeah, April, they said they only had seven hours of downtime. And then August is when it went bad again. And this was the worst month out of the year. So far anyway, we'll see what happens in December of this year but apparently heavy metal launched and it had a huge amount of players coming into it now this is one i'm not really sure about either again from a layman's point of view the player base wasn't that much higher than usual and compared to the older days of siege it certainly was not up there and the hardware and server capability should be basically i would think a good 10 times better than they used to be back in the day when you know Siege was a younger game and had more players. So I'm a bit worried that they weren't able to scale to the size to fix that. But uh, another interesting thing, again, as a layman, I don't understand this. They said here that in order to kind of get things working okay, they disabled the ranking system, but only the visual rank. The actual rank was being calculated behind the scenes just as normal but it wasn't being visually shown in the game to the player, if you remember that when you're trying to play the rank in that season. And that was a good couple of weeks until they fixed that. So it's kind of weird that switching off that visual part somehow made it so that the servers ran better. Cause like, I am unsure how the heck that made any difference when you're switching off the visual part, but I guess maybe they were offloading the whole calculation to a different server, which then wouldn't show up in game or something like that. But yeah, that was one of the ways to fix it and kind of make it better. But of course it took a while before they were able to fix that and get it back online. And then they say they were able to make changes so that that would not be needed again and would not happen again. They also talk about DDoS. So this is distributed denial of service attacks. And you're basically aimed at the servers, try and bring them down. They can sometimes be aimed at players. Xbox used to be really bad for that because it basically just 
showed your IP to everybody. Uh, I think that's been a, made a bit better these days, but this is still quite possible to happen uh, quite regularly for sure. And I even see the odd band wave going out for it as well, but we've talked about this a lot in the past because it used to be a big issue back then, so we'll not hang on it too long. And then we've got some interesting things here for server regions and pings. So of course, when you boot up Siege, it tries to find you the best server. Now that doesn't mean you're actually gonna play on that server. You know, if the population of that server is not big enough, you might play on a server somewhere else, even on the main menu, you might say you're connected to a closer server and stuff like that. But they apparently actually launched new servers in 2023 because they actually opened one in Korea and European Central. So I actually might play on that one every so often and I had no idea I was playing on a new server. Now, another thing, they don't mention this in here at all, is that Ubisoft doesn't own or run their own servers. Just like every single game company out there these days, it's all done with data centers. They're usually owned by either Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure. Now, these are big profitable elements of Amazon and Microsoft, and they have data centers all over the world. So they're, you know, Ubisoft is running on their servers and they pay, of course, for that. Uh, something like scaling might come down to actually making sure they actually pay enough. They also mentioned uh, new regions. So they're looking at different places and locations. Again, this, be, this is being done by the big uh, companies that run those data centers and, of course, place them in different locations. And, of course, they also need to be hooked up to really good internet which limits where they could potentially be because they're not just being built for gaming. They're usually running all kinds of crazy amounts of stuff on them for every industry that's out there. Because of course, everything is digital these days. And we already hit on the crossplay. I'm absolutely amazed that that was some sort of issue. For me, it just seems like you'd have all the different games from the different platforms just playing with each other. Of course, it's just console v console and the PC with streaming services. So... Yeah, I would have no idea that this could cause such an issue and was actually what was behind the big outages in December and then I think into January as well. Now here they talk about technology replacement. Now I'm wondering if this is hardware or software or both because of course the actual hardware will be nothing like they were running on at the launch of Siege and the hardware might have even been upgraded in the last couple of years they're running on and it may be also different between data centers and data centers so i'm wondering if this is actually uh, software they're talking about here because that's the thing they would have the most kind of control of and the different uh, technologies they could be using in that software but they don't go into much detail at all here but they're always looking at new technology and i, I assume it has changed dramatically over the course of rainbow six siege's lifespan so far now this little bit here is collaboration this is where they bring up that they're working with teams for with For Honor and Roller Champion. So I assume that's just like they're getting together, figuring out what technologies are working, what's not working, and collaborating on software and stuff like that. Uh, I assume it's not anything deeper than that. And hopefully they're just able to kind of learn from each other because they're all running online services all the time. So they get an idea of what they can maybe make better from each other. And then moving forward, of course, they're looking to minimize unplanned downtime so when a patch goes out it's usually down for a full hour the new hardware or the new uh, technology they're talking about they think they can actually reduce that downtime so maybe it'll go down to like half an hour in the future they're also looking to of course reduce the impact of ddos attacks they're looking to uh, tighten their collaboration with these other platforms these are games and probably i think just learn from them software wise on what they should and shouldn't do for honor and siege have been around for a long time so i wonder if this is a new thing or if it's just a thing they're always doing then we got uh, testing for new possible data centers of course this is the big companies making these data centers in those specific locations they're planned years in advance so this is probably just about those data centers coming online and then siege going hmm this might be a good place to put uh some of our you know our game servers and then removal and replacement of old technologies. Again, I hope this is software because, of course, the actual technology of data centers are constantly being upgraded no matter what. And I'm, I'm sure it has. The hardware will have dramatically changed from the game's original uh, launch. And even over the last couple of years will be significantly better than it was. So, yeah, this is... This is a blog that's good to have. I like the, the communication, but it is one that is very hard to figure out. 
Because like I say, I would not imagine that crossplay could have caused these outages and the December outages and why that would be such a big issue. But of course, there's easily many complicated things within that that could have been the reason. And then, you know, having to like switch off part of the ranking system visually, but still actually having it calculated in the background. Again, wonder how the heck that works, but it is very good to have all this communicated. And although I'm not able to understand it all, I'm very happy that they are communicating it. And uh, fingers crossed that this December will be better and that overall in the future we'll have less issues. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.